Hello, and welcome to the video. Today, we're going to be looking at two different mathematicians who are influential to history, their impact on the world, the time in which they lived, and how their contributions continue to affect us today. Welcome, one and all, to the Tales of Two Mathematicians. Our story begins in London on the 23rd of June, 1912. In one relatively common house in the affluent residential district of Maida Vale, a woman named Ethel Sarah Stoney has just given birth to a healthy baby boy. She decides to name him Alan, and adopts for him the last name of her husband, Julius Matheson Turing. The first two years of Alan's life were spent in relative peace. Julius Turing provided Ethel and the young Alan with a more than comfortable supply of money through his work in the Indian Civil Service. Unfortunately, Julius's civil service was still active while Turing was young, meaning that he was primarily absent from his early years. Regardless, the infant Turing lived a relatively simple and happy life with his mother and elder brother John. Then, just after his second birthday, chaos gripped the world. From the age of two to the age of six, Alan Turing and his family lived through the horrors of the First World War. While no part of the globe was spared from the bloody conflict, Alan was separated from the conflict due both to his young age, but also from the fact that his father was granted an exemption from service. This exemption, granted by his continued civil service in India, spared him, and by extension his family, from the brunt of the war lest we forget. Turing's genius was recognized early in life. Soon after enrolling in St. Michael's, a primary school located on Charles Road, the headmistress noticed that she had clever boys and hard-working boys, but Alan is a genius. Between January of 1922 and 1926, Turing was educated at a pre-high preparatory school called Hazelhurst. Later, in 1926, at the age of 13, Turing was enrolled at an independent boarding school called Sherborne. Turing was so determined at an early age to receive a quality education that when he was at risk of missing his first day of term due to the 1926 general strike, he rode 60 miles by himself via a bicycle simply to attend school. Turing was immediately shown to be a bright and attentive student, solving complicated mathematics equations at the age of 15, without having even studied basic calculus. Soon afterwards, Turing first encountered the work of Albert Einstein. Not only did he understand it, but some sources say that he even managed to deduce Einstein's questioning of Newton's laws of motion from a text in which this particular subject was not even mentioned. Turing met his first love at Sherborne, in the form of a fellow pupil named Christopher Colin Morecambe. Their relationship proved highly influential to Turing, with Morecambe encouraging Turing to further his study into the sciences. Their relationship was quite important to Turing, which made it all the more difficult when Morecambe died of bovine tuberculosis only two years after meeting Alan. In order to cope with this loss, Turing wrote to Morecambe's mother regularly. In these letters, Turing expressed not just his feelings for the late Morecambe, but also the drive that Morecambe had instilled within him. I am sure I could not have found anywhere another companion so brilliant and yet so charming and unconceited. I regarded my interest in my work and in such things as astronomy, to which he introduced me, 
as something to be shared with him, and I think he felt a little the same about me. I know I must put as much energy, if not as much interest, into my work as if he were alive, because that is what he would like me to do. Turing continued his education at King's College in Cambridge, where he was awarded first-class honors in mathematics. In 1935, he was elected as a fellow of King's College based upon the strength of a dissertation in which he proved the central limit theorem, which states that in many situations, when independent random variables are summed up, their properly normalized sum tends toward a normal distribution, even if the original variables themselves are not normally distributed. From September of 1936 to July of 1938, Turing spent most of his time at Princeton University in the cryptology department. This, combined with his unparalleled knowledge of computing and aptly named Turing machines, caused him to be one of the founding fathers of computational cryptography. After his education at Princeton, Turing returned to Cambridge, attending lectures given in 1939 by Ludwig Wittgenstein which saw Turing and Wittgenstein argue about the nature of basic computing, and different methods in which computing could be implemented in the future. It was unfortunately not long after that, until yet another shock rattled the world. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. The Second World War had begun. It was during this bloody strife that Turing did some of his most influential work. Enlisted by the British government, Turing and his team of cryptographers and engineers at a secret compound called Bletchley Park created one of the first large-scale mechanical computers, which they nicknamed the Bomb. This computer had one sole purpose, which was to decrypt the Nazi German Enigma machine, allowing the Allies to listen in to secret German communications. It was this, as well as operations with MI5 and Operation Mincemeat, and other counterintelligence operations performed by the Allies, which helped turn the tide of war against the Axis powers. Alan Turing died on June 8th of 1954 at the age of 41. He was found dead by his housekeeper with a half-eaten apple by his bed. The cause of death was ruled as cyanide poisoning. Alan Turing had committed suicide. The reason for this was likely depression brought about by chemical castration. This was mandated by the British government in 1952 when it was discovered that Turing was a homosexual. At this time in the United Kingdom, that was considered a criminal offense. Alan Turing made many contributions to the modern world, and we remember him with titles such as the father of modern computing, and with procedures such as the Turing test. In September of 2016, 64 years after his death, Alan Turing was officially pardoned by the British government. The next mathematician we will be discussing is Sofia Kovalevskaya. Born with the surname of Korvin Krugovska, she was born the second of three children in the Vitebsk region of the Russian Empire. She was born in 1858. Her education began at an early age, with physicist Nikolai Tirtov noticing her unusual aptitude for mathematics and physics at age 11. During that time period in Russia, Women were not permitted to attend universities, so the only option for Sophia to continue her education was to study abroad. She convinced her family to move to Berlin in Prussia in 1868. 
Only four years earlier, Prussia had defeated the Danish in the Second Schleswig War. Due to the economic boom following the war, Prussia, soon to be the German Empire, was a hive of activity for prestigious physicists, engineers, and great thinkers of the world. Due to her family's prestige and Sophia's own cognitive strengths, she was able to speak directly with figures such as Hermann von Himmholtz, Gustav Kirchhoff, Robert Bunsen, Thomas Huxley, and Charles Darwin. It was partially due to their own influence that she was admitted to the University of Heidelberg. In April of 1869, Sophia got married to a man named Vladimir Kovalevsky, a young paleontology student. Sophia continued her education in 1884 when she was appointed as an extraordinary professor in Stockholm University in Sweden. Unfortunately, following her tenure, Sophia died after contracting a particularly nasty bout of pneumonia. She died at the age of 41. Her legacy lives on today in things like the Sonia Kovalevsky High School Mathematics Day and the Kovalevskaya Fund, which is dedicated to supporting women in science in developing countries. Her major contributions to mathematics are extensive. Not only was she the first woman to obtain a doctorate in mathematics, the first woman appointed to a full professorship in Northern Europe, and one of the first women to work for a scientific journal as an editor, but she also made major contributions to analysis, partial differential equations, and mechanics. She was truly a pioneer for women in mathematics and the sciences around the world. And that was my video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.